Alright, so I can't show it off for yet, but uh, check it out. I got a gamer room now. Yeah, so I was going to show this off in another face cam video, because honestly, I did not expect this to be my next face cam video, like, whatsoever. I'm going to save the introductions. You've read the title. You probably know what this is already about. Honestly, I only expected to go as far as just make another highlight reel like I normally do with my other games, and I was going to do it with this game as well, and... Eagle One, control the objectives. Securing... <laughs> Trust me, that's probably coming as well. But yeah, again, you probably read the title. If you're a Call of Duty player, you know exactly what I'm going to talk about here. So as of the time that I have written out this script and I'm making this video, the first weekend of Modern Warfare 2 has just wrapped up and generally speaking, I, I love it. It's pretty great. I do have issues with it, most of which I'm gonna be talking about here and that pretty much everyone else has. But I mean, if I'm talking about like the overall game, like all in all, I am enjoying it. I am really liking the game. And full disclosure too, like, this is gonna be coming from someone who absolutely freaking loved Modern Warfare 2019. Like, really loved. Even with all of its issues, I mean, there's just so much innovation in that game that I appreciate so much that I kind of overlooked it. As for Modern Warfare 2, I mean, the gunplay is fantastic. It's just, just as good, if not better, than the first game. Maps, specifically, are so fucking good in this game. Like, I'm sure if you've played the game by now, like, I cannot express, like, just how much better these maps are from the last game. Farm 18, specifically, is already one of my favorite maps in the series. It just plays so freaking well. Gunsmith, the innovations to Gunsmith are fantastic. I love how much time this is going to save when it comes to, like, unlocking attachments, when it comes to unlocking weapons and all these different receivers. Like, it's kind of shocking looking back now that they didn't do this for the last Gunsmith. But, you know, it's a beta, and with any beta, there's going to be issues, right? And that's kind of the idea, right? I mean, let the public play it, and then they give the feedback to improve the game. That's how a beta always works. And while I don't obviously want to speak for an entire community of players, especially for something as big as the Call of Duty community, this is generally speaking what I've noticed as far as issues go with the game. And these are also problems I personally have with the game in its current state. So this won't cover everything, but there's four big points that I want to get into. Classic minimap, so bringing back red dots when someone fires an unsuppressed weapon. Dead Silence and Ninja. I mean, there's a lot going on with this one. Some people say it should be a perk. Some people say it should be a feel upgrade only. Some people are saying it can be both. Footstep audio. This is a freaking big one. It's basically impossible to have actual gunfights in this game when people can literally hear you coming from a mile away. And like, don't get me wrong, the audio design in this game is unbelievably incredible. And I'm saying this as someone who specializes in audio design. Like, I am just relentlessly impressed with how good the audio is in this game. But oh my god, it just favors campy play style so much and punishes aggressive players so much. Like, you can't even move around the map because the footstep audio is so loud right now. And fourth and final one I want to go over is the perk system. And the general reception I've seen around this is... I'll be blunt, it's bad. It's, it's just bad. Um, like, look, I can see what they were going for by making players work for stronger perks. Like, I do see what they were trying to go for. But the general fact of the matter is, it just takes way too long for all of these perks to charge up. Players are constantly at a disadvantage too often just because they have to wait for these perks to charge up. If you're joining a match in progress, it punishes you even further. This is just, generally speaking, it's a system that didn't really need to be fixed. It was perfectly fine in the last how many games now? Oh my god, so, and, and, and freaking Survivor, like... Last Stand. I'll get to Last Stand. So I'll post a link in the description in the Infinity Ward subreddit where they have the entire beta feedback here. Someone on this subreddit, I hope I'm saying his name right, CV coming for you, he basically put out this entire breakdown of like all the major issues the general player base has with it in a, a really mature and constructive way. I'll link to that post down below so you can see. And I do feel similar about a lot of these issues. I mean, like, bringing back reload canceling, getting rid of disbanding lobbies, the user interface being kind of a clusterfuck right now. So, like, there are a lot of issues, like, and I think this post kind of goes through all the big ones, but I wanted to focus on these four specifically because these are the ones that Infinity Ward addressed in a community blog post earlier last night. And yeah, the community's not happy. They're really not happy. Like, they're really, really really not fucking happy. I genuinely have never seen a video game community this mad before in a very long time. So I'm gonna look a little weird here because I'm gonna be looking at the camera trying to recite everything that Infinity War had brought up in this blog post, so let me go through every single big point here that they made. So this is what they said about Classic Minimap. 
Currently in the Modern Warfare 2 beta, we only show enemy player dots when a UAV is active. The design reason for this is that we do not want to punish players for firing their weapons. We also want players to actively search out the origin of a gunshot versus traveling directly to where the dot is on the minimap. As for the perk system, we've seen varied feedback on the perk package system. Some players love it and others feel it's an unnecessary departure from the original system. We feel it's a nice shakeup to how perks work in the general progression of a match. We've also balanced the ultimate perks to be more powerful as you earn them later in the match. We'll continue testing throughout Beta Weekend 2, including drastically accelerating the earn rate of these to see how players react. Our goal remains improving the flow of all perks ahead of launch. This is what they said about Dead Silence. Dead Silence is another hot topic as many players have expressed that they would like to see it as a perk instead of a field upgrade. We believe it is important to game health that rushers are not able to move at high speeds without consequence. Dead Silence as a field upgrade creates a balance between freedom of movement and predictability of combat. And then finally, this is what they said about footstep audio. Footstep audio in week one of the multiplayer beta was very high, giving players long distance directional information about enemies. For weekend two, we have some changes coming in. We are reducing the range of footstep audio for the various player movement states, jog, sprinting, and tactical sprinting. This will help soften the cost of moving around the map. The second change is that enemy and friendly footsteps are now distinct. So yeah, in, to summarize in terms of listening to feedback, they, they haven't listened to feedback. So we're not getting a traditional perk system. They're not giving us a classic mini-map. They're not going to address Dead Silence in any way. Now, credit where credit is due, they did address footstep audio, but as of writing this, we don't know how that's going to change in the second weekend of the beta. I'm, I'm literally hoping, I'm hoping by the time that this video is out, like it's much better and it's pretty much a significant improvement. But at this moment, we just, we don't know how this is going to work. And that same thing goes for the perk package system as far as the recharge rate for all of these perks go. And again, like I've never seen a community this angry in a really long time. And believe me, I've been in some communities that are pretty freaking nasty. Like literally, like literally every, like almost every Call of Duty creator that I've been following is just completely pissed off about this. Instead of considering or taking in the feedback, Infinity War has shown no indication they're going to listen to any feedback on any topics that many players have wanted during a period where the studios need to be given this kind of feedback so their game can be the best it can be. So look, I was also upset seeing this post too, like everyone else was. And believe me, I have a lot to say about it. It's like, if I had made a video like this like a year, even a year or two ago, I'd probably be a lot more angry and a lot more cynical about this. But I think for just for this video, I kind of want to have a more nuanced take because right now everyone's kind of sounding off. Everyone's angry, they're pissed, they're upset, they're exhausted. And you know, it could be so easy for me to just kind of join in on all of that and just be like absolutely burning them to the ground. Like, if you were, like why would you do this? Like this game's gonna fucking suck at launch. But I kind of want to make this video as more of like an open letter of sorts to Infinity Ward as a whole. Like not just from the perspective of a Call of Duty fan, but from the perspective of someone who's also worked on creative projects, like productions, endeavors, etc. So speaking as a Call of Duty fan, I mean, yeah, I don't like this. Even speaking as someone who freaking loved Modern Warfare 2019, like I know Modern Warfare 2019 has issues. It's got a lot of serious issues. It's got the same exact issues with footstep audio, with dead silence, with the lack of a classic minimap. And to be perfectly blunt, like, the entire map design is extremely hit or miss. This has had some pretty good maps, but it's also had some of the worst maps in the series. But like, but the reason I love it so much is because this is the first time in Lord knows how long that Call of Duty felt like it was actually trying to innovate. It felt like the series was getting a soft reboot like Call of Duty 4, again. Like, gunplay, visuals, audio design, engine movement, everything about this game clicked with me, and a lot of other people too, considering it sold like 30 million copies. It's the best-selling Call of Duty game of all time. I was willing to overlook a lot of its problems because I loved what it did new so much that I just didn't care. It just made me excited for the future of what they could do for more games in the future. Like, generally speaking, Modern Warfare 2019 was an experiment. Some of it worked out really well, some of it didn't work out very well. The problem with Modern Warfare 2 is that it's repeating this. It shouldn't be repeating this. And look, again, I do want to give credit where credit is due. Like, I'm glad they're addressing the footstep audio. I'm glad they're addressing the perk system and trying to find some kind of balance there. And, and again, I, I cannot express enough. The f maps are so much fucking better. The maps in this game are great. Like, all of these elements, like, even just the maps alone, this is going to make it a much better game than Modern Warfare 2019 was. 
but like but i'm gonna be honest when it comes to like the response on all these things the classic mini map dead silence the perk system the footstep audio like all these other little things like reload canceling and all that like i'm gonna be totally honest it just it comes off as tone deaf at best and passive aggressive at worst now do i think anyone in infinity war is intentionally trying to act like this like absolutely not like, I don't think they're trying to push buttons with the community. I don't think they're intentionally trying to piss off the entire fan base with these kind of things. But the sense that I get from this update post is just one of, like, complete hostility. Like, it, it, like it really feels like the teams are just stomping their feet saying, oh, well, well, this is how we made the game. You're going to have to deal with it. Look, I get it. It's hard to fully grasp what a community as big as Call of Duty wants. Like, everyone is sounding off in different ways about this right now. But I really think it says something when the response has been this negative. And I mean, like, this overwhelmingly negative. Now, I'm not going to act like I know anything about what game development is like in any sense, or what kind of internal data that like, these studios have that's apparently proving that this kind of stuff is going to be better for the game. But I can speak as a player, and... As a competitive player, I feel like pretty much everyone in the community has already said their piece. Like, if you go to people like Exclusive Ace, Modern Warzone, J-God, like, I think, I think you kind of get the feeling like how we feel at this point. But let me just say something as a casual player too. I played these games when I was 12. Black Ops 1 and Modern Warfare 3 are two of my all-time favorite games to this day, and that especially includes the multiplayer. I have some of the most fond memories of playing Black Ops multiplayer with my friends, playing Modern Warfare 3 multiplayer, generally more on my own. And again, here's the thing to keep in mind. I was 12 when these games came out. I was not good. Like, I was not good at these games at all. And, and despite that, like, I still love them to death. Like, I'm not even joking. These are two of my favorite games of all time. I love these games. And the reason I bring that up is because these games have elements that this new Modern Warfare is just sorely missing. So let me try to express my stance on this, coming from someone who started off as a casual player and became more of an aggressive player from Modern Warfare 2019 onward. So, yeah, classic minimap... Jesus, I'm gonna break my games at this point. Classic minimap was in both of these games. This was freaking essential for me. Like as, like, as a kid, this told me exactly where I need to travel on the map to get kills. It told me exactly where I could go on the map to hide if I need to. It told me where on the map I could avoid. Because trust me, I was 12. I was probably that squeaker camping in a corner on Nuketown with the FAMAS. And again, like, I don't mean to say all this in a really mean-spirited way, but, like, I, I genuinely just don't understand how this benefits any players in the game. It definitely doesn't benefit aggressive players, but it can't benefit casual players either. I can tell you right now, if these games didn't have this classic minimap, I wouldn't play them nearly as much. In a game where so many gunfights and killstreaks can completely swipe a match, this minimap was the only indication I could have as a casual player to understand what my next moves were. And again, like, this is a key point, like, everyone's pointing out here. Like, this encourages movement. This is a good thing for games like this. I'd say a lot more on this, but I think, obviously, by now, you've probably seen much, much bigger Call of Duty creators say a lot more on why this map needs to come back, so I think I'll just leave it at that. Now, as for Dead Silence and Ninja and the whole conversation around that... You know what? I need to get a copy of this game. I'll be right back. This was solved in Vanguard. Vanguard had Ninja as a perk, and it still kept Dead Silence as a field upgrade. For a player like myself who got more aggressive and competitive, like, this was perfect. I was able to have classes where I ran Ghost and Ninja, but was generally weaker in other categories like Explosive Damage Intake and all of that. I liked that I could create brand new classes with the option of putting on Dead Silence so I could briefly have the advantage of Ghost and Ninja. And like, and like that's the whole idea, is player experimentation. That's what makes these games. Look, I know I have a hot take on this by liking this game's multiplayer. I know this game gets a lot of flack, and in some areas, like, rightfully so. But when it comes to this front specifically, and I might come back to Vanguard again at some point in this video, like, they, they handled this perfectly. I, I don't see why Ninja and Dead Silence can't just simultaneously exist. It gives the players more options. Like, giving, giving players more freedom is almost always a good thing. I mean, like, look at that game, Breath of the Wild. That game, I, I'm not even pointing to it correctly here. Breath of the Wild. Like, that game's entire premise is just around freedom. And, like, look at how good a game like that is. 
Like, this is something, like, all the best games of all time have in common, is they give you this freedom. They give you this choice. That's why we play video games. All right, so finally, I gotta talk about the perk system. So, you probably know how it works by now. You choose two perks, you get a bonus perk, and you get an ultimate perk. This bonus perk and this ultimate perk are earned throughout the match. You don't have them immediately, you have to earn them. I know, I know I'm know, i speaking to the choir here, but this is just a really flawed system. This doesn't really benefit anyone either. Putting a, putting a timer on such important perks like Ghost or High Alert like this puts anyone at a huge disadvantage. Like, casual players will be at a disadvantage. Competitive players will be at a disadvantage. Like, flank, flankers will be at a competitive disadvantage. Like, the... There really aren't many situations where people can benefit from this system. And look, again, I don't think the idea is inherently bad. I see what they are going for. I actually think another creator, the exclusive ace, he actually had a really good take on this, where instead of just having the base perks charge up, it's the pro versions of the perks that charge up. Again, I'll link to that video down below. I'm sure you've probably seen it by now. But again, my point is, like, I can see what they were trying to do, but as it stands right now, like, this is just too disadvantageous. Is that even a word disadvantageous? And this happens especially too if they like if it's in if it's an in progress match. This happens a lot. So like me personally, like I like to run ghost on all of my classes. I like to flank a lot. Like especially in objective modes like search and destroy. Like if or when I do end up making this highlight reel of all these clips I've gotten, you'll probably see me flanking a lot in games like search and destroy. So like what's the point of having that playstyle if the game's just gonna punish me for using it until halfway into the match? Like, I can't benefit from this playstyle if I can't have ghosts until halfway into the match. And if I'm doing really poorly, that just makes things even worse. Like, what if I'm having a bad day and not collecting much score, or the game's obvious skill-based matchmaking decides to just screw me over and I'm constantly just getting in bad games or I'm only getting, like, five kills for the entire match? Do I just deal with it only having two perks for, like, the entire match? While everyone else has all four perks, no issues, and they're going even farther and doing even better? Like, honestly, like, it, I don't even think it really needs this charge. Like, this four perk system, at least, my, at least to me personally, seems pretty balanced at the time like especially in the ultimate category when you have perks like ghost and high alert competing now could that change down the line sure obviously some perks are going to be naturally stronger than others but general generally speaking like this wasn't a point of the game that really needed to be fixed it wasn't broken Ugh, and on that note survivor why did they bring back last stand <laughs> like they like they know how much this community has hated last stand and like how infamous it is why would they bring something like this back? No last stand. <laughs> Fuck you, last stand. Now, I know that's probably gonna lead to a lot of people disagreeing with me in the sense that some people worked really hard on this perk system. And I know there is an argument to be made. You know, if this is what the developers intended, then either, either we should just roll with it or not play the game. And I can kind of understand that. But here, just to like drastically change topics for a second, because believe me, this is gonna matter. Can you imagine if that happened with the Sonic movie? Remember when absolutely everyone on the planet was clowning on how absolutely bad Sonic's design was? Like, yeah, you can make the same case there. This was the vision for the film. You could argue that people should either live with it or just not see the film, but that didn't happen. Instead, the team on the film saw all this feedback, some of it really, really harsh feedback, let's be real here. And like, now look where we are. Like, the first movie was great. The second movie, like, this is arguably the best video game movie ever made. I'm dropping all of my things. I'm gonna break my stuff, Jesus. But like, my point is like, this is, this wouldn't have existed if they didn't listen to this feedback. We have a third movie on the horizon. Might as well just break myself at this point. Like, none of this would have happened if Paramount's entire mentality was, oh, well, this is our vision. Deal with it. Like, can you imagine how much the original movie would have bombed if they kept that original design for Sonic? I can't help but feel the same thing is happening here. Like the like the classic minimap, the footstep audio, the perk system, dead silence, like all these other little issues, like it feels like it's this game's smoothie Sonic design. You know what I mean? And that's kind of the vibe I get from this blog post. Infinity Ward really wants you to like this stuff. They, like, they want people to like this new map. They want people to listen to the 3D audio. They want people to adapt to the new perk system. But, but they aren't. And for Infinity War, I'll admit, that has to really suck. Like, that really has to fucking suck. Like, I get it. Putting out a creative vision that people out there generally don't like hurts. It really hurts a lot. It, like, it really hurts so bad when you make something with a certain intention and it just 
it doesn't seem like anyone is clicking with it or likes it. As a creator, it feels like you're just kind of, you know, backed into a corner and your only choices are to either just double down on what you've made or just it feels like you have to admit defeat and just admit like what you made wasn't good. And it, that, that, that does suck. And I know for Call of Duty specifically, like, I know I keep saying suck a lot, but like this has to really suck in Call of, for Call of Duty specifically because I've seen a lot of harsh reception for this. Some of it rightfully so, some of it maybe a little too far. And again, that's not to dunk on like why people are upset. Like I get why people are upset, but like, I don't know. It just feels like there isn't a whole lot of nuance anymore because people are just so exhausted with how Infinity Ward has responded to this. But here's the thing I've learned from being a creative person myself and working on creative productions and endeavors. People are always going to remember your screw ups, especially if they stay there. But the thing that they're going to remember more is your humility and how you handle it and how you change it. It takes a lot of strength to acknowledge that something you made isn't clicking and that it's best to go with what the overwhelming majority has said very loud and clear they wanted. Especially when people who have played the game early had things like Classic Minimap and it absolutely adored Modern Warfare 2. It hurts having to change a creative vision like that, I get it. But people will remember that you changed the creative vision for the better and they will appreciate you for that. When I first played Vanguard's Alpha and Beta, I absolutely hated it. I couldn't believe how bad it was from so many different angles. I was absolutely dead set on not getting it, especially because Black Ops Cold War kind of burned me out at the time. But I still got the game. And the reason why is because Sledgehammer addressed everything people didn't like about the game. There were so many changes in quality of life improvements that Vanguard felt like a completely different game at launch. That response from Sledgehammer was the reason I decided to buy the game. Because it told me they were open to feedback, that they were open to changing what they intended in order to make a better game for everyone. I know this is definitely still a hot take, but Vanguard honestly has one of my favorite multiplayers in the series for this reason. It does still have some issues, I will admit that. But the fact is that Sledgehammer has almost always listened to the feedback and tried to address those issues in their games. This happened with World War II as well when that game had a total relaunch. Everyone liked playing World War II after its multiplayer overhaul. Or at the very least acknowledge it was a much better game than it had been at launch. I really think the same thing can happen here with Modern Warfare 2 before it comes out. I want to love this game. I want to play it to hell and back until my console can't handle it anymore. There's so many things here I love so much. But the repeat mistakes from the first game are a little too much this time around and while I'm mostly liking what I've played, I can't really say for certain anymore if I'm even going to like this game more than the first when all the pieces are there for it to be better. So this is going to kind of go off topic, but there is another game I want to talk about that I, I will connect in relation to all of this. Splatoon 3. So I really didn't plan on getting this game initially. I was going to get it eventually, but not immediately. I always liked Splatoon, but I never got crazy into it. I missed out on the first game despite being one of the only 10 people who actually owned a Wii U. And while I did play Splatoon 2, I can't say I was all that into it. The single player was fine, but it was incredibly repetitive and boring at times for me. I didn't like how the game handled map and game mode rotations. I absolutely hated its ranked system and how hard you could be punished just for losing a few games. The vast majority of my time playing this game was spent on Salmon Run, and even then I couldn't play it all the time because it was on a constant timer and it was unplayable at certain points of the day. I wasn't interested in playing Octo Expansion whatsoever. So because of all this, I wasn't initially crazy into getting it. I wasn't in a hurry to get it until all of my friends who had bought the game on launch day it's told me on launch day like hey go out and get this we want to play it with you you should give it a shot this is probably gonna be my game of the year this year i have been spending multiple nights until two in the morning playing this game solo and with friends this game's addressed almost every single issue i have had with this series so the gameplay is even faster than the last two the weapon and play style variety is at its best Salmon Run has had significant additions and is open all the time. The single player is leagues above the other two games with so many well-designed and fun levels to run through. There's all kinds of other quality of life improvements, like the addition of a firing range to test weapons in the lobby, snacks and drinks to give you boosts and matches, walkers that you can customize, a brand new tabletop card game that, in all honesty, isn't really that good or interesting, but they still tried to add something new to the game. And it isn't that super important or significant, they added it just so they could add it. Ranked play is so, so much better handled here. I can actually play the other game modes without fear of dropping my rank significantly after losing. Literally, my only real complaint with the game is the continued insistence on mapping game mode rotations, but those at least rotate a lot. 
Like, all of this is possible because the devs listened to what people liked and didn't like about the last game. They improved everything people liked about the last two games. They took out everything people didn't like about the last two games. They added new experimental features that really didn't break my enjoyment of the game or break the pace of anything else in the game. And it's working out exceptionally well for them. The game has sold 3.5 million copies in Japan alone in its first week, and that's only considering Japan. Like, it's the biggest game launch in history down there. It's doing Elden Ring numbers, and it's taking the world by storm. So the, the reason I bring this up is because I think the same thing can happen to Modern Warfare 2. I really think they can come back from this if they're just willing to listen to the feedback and willing to at least, you know, try some of these changes that the community wants. And to understand why the overwhelming majority of us just don't like some of these changes. People are upset, they're angry, but above all, I think they're just exhausted. We know how good this game can be in its full potential. The core game is fantastic. The new competitive game modes are a ton of fun. Third person mode is the closest we're going to get to a new Metal Gear Solid multiplayer. But none of these things are going to matter if the community feels like they're being completely ignored. Look at what has happened with Halo Infinite. That game at its core is a fantastic game that really fell off really badly. I know the issues that Halo Infinite has are totally separate from Modern Warfare 2, and I know that Modern Warfare 2 is still going to sell really well no matter what Infinity Ward does. It's the sequel to the best-selling Call of Duty game of all time, and it's a Modern Warfare game. It's going to do great numbers. But this isn't what Call of Duty needs right now. All the feedback and improvements in the world made to Vanguard still couldn't save that game from selling so poorly by COD standards. And you know, Activision being a shit company probably doesn't help either. People are leaving Warzone 1, especially with this and Warzone 2 on, on the horizon. And even then, I've seen so many mixed opinions on Warzone 2 that I don't think it's going to be anywhere near as successful as the first one. I know this is just my personal take, but I know I'm not going to enjoy Warzone 2. It just doesn't look appealing to me at all. It feels like a more standard battle royale with all of Warzone's original identity stripped away. So that's going to be a complete bust for me. Modern Warfare 2 is all I've got until Treyarch's next game in 2024. I don't want this to become another Halo Infinite. I want it to become a Splatoon 3. So in the extremely unlikely event that someone or a group of people at Infinity Board are watching a video like this, please, please hear us out. There is so much potential with this game. We're speaking out because we love it. We want it to be the best it possibly can be. We want to know that our concerns and our issues are going to be addressed. Yeah, of course, there's going to be people that are going to be perfectly fine with you guys sticking to your original vision for this game. But I genuinely think a lot, lot more people are going to be happy with at least some kind of compromise here. Just meet us in the middle and know we're, we just want to engage like this because we want the game to be the best it can possibly be. Like, we, we know how strong it is to stick to an artistic vision, but I think a lot of us know how much stronger it takes to learn that changing that vision can be a good thing. Like, give us a classic minimap, give us a better perk system, give us ninja in addition to dead silence, keep working on the footstep audio. If not, like, just meet us in the middle. If you want to keep this perk system, just make it as fast as possible to get these perks so players aren't at a constant disadvantage. If you want to stick with this original minimap, I mean, do what Vanguard did. They had a radar perk and a forward intel perk. This is going to go a little bit off script, but like one idea that I wanted to put out there mostly has to do with the bird's eye perk. Like that, right now, that's the closest thing we've got to a classic mini map. In F Infinity Ward, like if you want to keep this map, like maybe at the very least, like we can have a compromise with classic mini map. Like give us both. Like maybe for respawn game modes, we have that classic mini map and bird's eye gives you that advantage for seeing players pinged in certain directions when you get UAVs and whatnot. And then maybe for non-respawn game modes like Search and Destroy, Bird's Eye just gives you classic minimap. And like, that's just one of the ideas I have. Like, there's just so many different ways that they can approach the feedback on this. There's so many different ways they can improve this game. I love playing this game. I want to have fun with it. I want to make content on it. Those Vanguard and Warzone videos I made are still some of the most fun I've ever had creating content. But if these design choices are here to stay and Infinity Ward won't hear us out on any feedback, I honestly can't see myself playing this game long term like I did the last Modern Warfare. And I really don't want that. Anyways, that's all I had to say. I know everyone's kind of sounding off right now, so I just kind of wanted to throw my two cents in. I know this video is probably not going to do super duper well, but again, everyone's sounding off. I love what they have in this game so far. I want it to do well, so I just wanted to put out a more nuanced, creative focus take on it, I guess. That's one way to put it. 
So yeah, if you made it this far, thank you for watching. Thank you for hearing me out. I'll probably be back to the more haha -ha funny gamer moments that I've been doing soon. I'm probably going to be making a Modern Warfare 2 highlight reel like I have been with some of my other ones. Definitely going to be making a Splatoon 3 one at some point. I'm still trying to work on a couple of other projects in the background. I still have some reviews that I want to get out there at some point. So if you're interested in any of that, maybe consider subscribing. And yeah, that's all I really have to say. I'm not really going to have an intro for this particular video. If you want to check out some of my other stuff, you can check out some of my other gameplay videos and editorial videos here. And yeah, that's all I really got. I'll see you guys around.